Wow, I'm so privileged, Coach Hilda, to be here. So privileged. I've always followed her and liked everything she's doing here. And I must say, you guys are so blessed to have such a wonderful leader to, to be able to guide you. I know you're learning and also teaching others. And I've been, I've been able to, to interact with some of the coaches, Coach Fiona. I've listened to Coach Marjorie uh, on Thursday yesterday, I was listening to Bob FM and I was listening to, I don't know if it was her, she was talking about the vision boards. I was like, wow, okay, the stage has already been set. So I'm so happy to be here. It's really a privilege, I must say. Uh, like she introduced me, my name is Faith Nasali Anguzu Ndiwanchima Nafumbi Rwaba Lugwala. I don't know if that Mlugwala is around here because he told me he would come and. Uh, <laughs> And, and see if, if I'm telling the truth. <laughs> I am really so happy. Um, I'm a marketer by profession. I studied marketing and uh, I lecture at Uganda Management Institute uh, in marketing. I also work for an advertising agency called Scanad. So should you need any work in advertising, eh? you can always approach. Sorry for the kalango kaisizao. <laughs> I am so happy to be here. And um, I, would, I don't want to give you like a whole list of the things I do, what I've achieved in life. But if I had to do it, it would go back to what we are going to discuss today, the vision board. Because there's nothing I can say that I've been able to get to work without being serious about it, uh, as regards what you guys have been talking about, you know, focus, being courageous, being confident, and really writing down your goal and vision. And I love the vision board. Um, I first learned about the vision board about seven years ago. I was at a point in my life when I was career-wise okay. I'm using the word okay because I was okay, not really thriving. I was okay, uh, marriage was okay, like things were really running okay, but there was something in me that was feeling like there's a void. There's something more that I need to do with my life. There's something more that I need to dig out of me because I didn't feel like this is all faith was brought on earth to do. I am passionate about marketing, but I didn't feel like that is all about my life. So I went on a search of what is this thing called life? What can I do? What does faith bring to the table? Like if you take away all my career things and you know the things that at that point i thought were successful for me success for me like what more is faith about you know i felt like okay i think i need to do something more about myself so that i can become even a better person so i started working on myself and it all started in the mind i realized that i had so much mental uh what's the word obulemu what is obulemu in mental disability, that all the things that were challenging me, the things that were holding me back, were all starting in the mind. They were all starting in the mind. So I had to go on a real work on my mind, working on my mind to change my mind. The believers in this place, you know, the scriptures in uh, Romans chapter 12, it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You're going, your life is going to be transformed Primarily because it has started in your mind. That is where it starts from. And I love the vision board because uh, it's a good tool, but the vision board in itself will not work until your mind has changed. You can have the most beautiful vision board as big as that wall with the most beautiful pictures, but for as long as there are contradicting thoughts in your mind that don't agree with what is on that vision board, it will not work it will not work. So basically what I would like to share this evening is, um, first of all, how you change your mind. The fact that you need to change your mind. I know uh, probably you have had these discussions before, but this for me is um, the foundation of you starting on the vision board. Because you can have several vision boards. I have uh, two vision boards in my bedroom. There is one for something very specific, then there is another for the general things. Not clutter. <laughs> I'm deliberate about what is on that board, but it, it has several other things that uh, are not specific to one you know, area that this is the focus. But this other one, this is it. This, like, everything about it is about that particular thing I want to achieve in life. So, like I said, it goes back to changing your mind. 
if you feel defeated in your mind and you put, I, I printed out some of the pictures uh, for demonstration, but they could represent some of the things that, you know, some of you may want in life. Even if you print out a um, million dollars, you know, and put it on your vision board, for as long as your mind is not aligned, you don't believe it in your mind that you can have it. That picture will be very beautiful on the vision board, but your mind will be telling you, you cannot achieve it. You cannot achieve it. I read a book by uh, a gentleman called William Murphy. The book is called, uh, it's, it's about the mind, understanding your mind. And in that book, he states that if you want to achieve something and you know that's your desire, but you constantly in your mind have a contradicting thought that, 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 that counters that achievement you want, that desire you want, this contradicting thought will always overpower that desire. It will always overpower it. So in that case, you have to make sure that the mind is in a state that is conducive to be able to achieve that which you desire. You know, I know the mind is a very wide topic. I, I, I don't want to go into so much of it because I cannot say I'm an expert on it, but I know for sure anything in life that bothers us, what we are not able to achieve, what we are able to achieve, it all comes down to the mind. You know, if you've seen sportsmen, uh, I used not to watch sports until I got married. The only time I would watch sports is a uh, World Cup, which was uh, once in four years. But when I got married, I realized I got married to someone who would watch tennis the whole match. I don't know if any of you has watched a tennis game. It can go up to five hours. He will watch all the football games on, on the weekend. Arsenal versus Crystal Palace, Notting Witch versus all those teams that you're like, is it really important that you watch this game? Can we watch something more inspiring than this game, you know? So I learned that these postmen, eh, they don't win simply because they are the best. Okay, they become the best because they have already made up their mind to be the best. They focus. They speak to themselves, you know. They change their mind. There is a, a tournament, I, I don't remember which year it was, uh, a, a Grand Slam tennis tournament. I think it was Australia Grand Slam. This lady won the first Grand Slam of her life simply because she allowed her mind to dwell on it that I'm the one winning. Serena Williams was playing in that, in that tournament. Uh, I don't know which other big star was playing, but she's the one actually who beat Serena Williams to go to the final. You beat the greatest because you have said, I am going to make it, you know? So the mind, you know, you, 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 you take time to make sure that you clean up the clutter in the mind. Because let me tell you, the world does not care. They will throw everything at you. TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, about one year, all that is there. But you have to be laser focused, like Coach Hilda said. You have to be laser focused. I'm not going to just allow any junk enter my mind. I'm not going to just allow anything. Me, unfortunately, I don't watch news. I only watch news if there's something specific I want to watch. Because these guys, they skew that news to, to get your attention so that advertisers, us, who are buying ad, uh, ad, uh, space on their, on their channels, can see that there are so many people watching so that you can buy the brands that we are selling. But otherwise, exactly. There's, there's not much good news. I'm sorry if there's any journalist in this place, but I know for sure there's not much good news on the news. And if you know every time you watch something, it depresses you. Like during the COVID season, you people, I went off Facebook, I went off Instagram, I went off WhatsApp, because I realized every time I turn on any of those three channels, I was getting fear, 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 fear. Until I said, you know what, enough of this. I've seen people I've worked with, they sit here, I sit here, die. I'm not going to allow to torment myself. I went off. That was a step for me to guard my mind so that I focus on how do we get out of this quagmire called COVID, you know? In that time, I, I was, of course, all of us prayed. I don't think anyone was just sitting saying, let it come, let it come and try me, you know? <laughs> we were praying, you know? But it, it really took my, my conscious, deliberate effort to say I am guarding my mind. I don't want to know how many numbers, many, how many have got infections, how many have died, how many have recovered. That in itself, it's good information, but there is a subtle fear that it pushes in your mind. Okay? So the mind is a powerful uh, tool that God has given us. And, and uh, talking about the mind, the, the vision board, 
really is a tool that supports the law of attraction. I don't know if you have heard of the law of attraction, but even the scripture says that uh, guard your heart jealously because out of it flow the issues of life. Every time you think, you're going to attract those things. Whatever you put on your vision board, you probably have thought about it. You didn't by, uh, by chance put it on your, on, your, on your vision board. I don't have any picture here that has football, that has uh, play, um, fighter jets, because I, I've not thought about it, you know? But there's someone here who probably wants a career in football, and they want to see themselves winning the golden boot, winning the, the, being the man of the match or something like that. And that is what they are going to print out and put on their vision board. So the law of attraction, basically, it, it, it says that um, whatever you continuously think about, you're going to attract. Do you realize that when you start desiring something, you start seeing it? You start seeing it. If you want to buy, say, a particular car, say a Benz, you will see that car more often. But the moment you don't think about it, you will not see it. You will not see it. It's like there is a magnet God put in the universe that whatever you put your focus on, you're going to see. So if you don't print out these pictures and put them before you, there is no way that these things are going to come to you. No way. I, I, I heard a preacher say that there is nothing on the universe that doesn't have ears. We can see that us as human beings, we have ears. Animals have ears. But let me tell you, money has ears. Money. And money knows people who don't like it. And it runs away from them. Do you know there are people who don't like money? Let me just give you a practical example. You go to the supermarket. Or, or maybe you, you get on a border and someone gets out change to give you. Or you give the person change and it's all creased like this. That person doesn't like money. Not that I'm exalting money. But if you respect money, you know how to handle money. Not by spending, but even the way you organize it. My husband has always trained me in that area. You don't just fold, fold money and you don't, you organize it properly. <laughs> you organize it properly, you know? So the law of attraction, you put in your mind those pictures. Of course, you, there, there are inspirations all around us, you know? We have inspirations from the interactions we have here. Like if I interact with Hilda, there are things I'll pick at, I'm like, mm. I want to also achieve that. I want to achieve that. Then I start thinking about it. And then I'm like, okay, what does it take to do this and this and this? Then I print it out and put it on my vision board. Of course, with a plan. You don't just put anything on your vision board because, okay, Hilda is doing it. Let me also do it. Maybe it is her grace to do it and not your grace to do it. For example, God has not given me a special grace to sing. So I don't. I can't sing. So by no means I cannot say that I am going to be a Grammy Award winning artist. <laughs> no. Because I know it's not in me. So there are those things that naturally uh, come to you that you can easily do it. But you need to put in effort. Even the best of the best train. I told you the sportsman. Serena Williams, she just announced the other day that she's retiring. But that woman would go so hard and train. Cristiano Ronaldo. People love to hate that guy, but that guy puts in the effort. He puts in the effort, you know? He doesn't just show up and things happen. He puts in the effort, you know? So much as you may print these pictures, lovely, you know? But if there is effort you're going to have to put in, you need to know what is that effort I have to put in. I remember uh, one of the things I had on my vision board was uh, I was doing my master's and uh, it had become hard. I said, Domani, I'm putting this thing now on the vision board so that it's ever before me. That time, lockdown came. First of all, it was a weekend class. Now, going for weekend class, Saturday, Sunday, the whole, like, how, how many months can I even say? I don't know if any of you has done a weekend class. It can be, like, hectic. You have a job Monday to Friday, then you have to go to class. So it can be tempting to set to down, not to go. And then you're married. You have responsibilities. You know? <laughs> so it can be so tempting to say, I will not go. Then lockdown came. 
Coursework are like coursework. You have marks missing. You have to chase down a lecturer. I need to look for my marks. I need to. I must graduate. I said, you know what? Then the the the, the hard the hard part of it actually was the the research bit because we had to do research. And now you have to look to go in the field. You have to find the topic, the the topic approved. Like it's a tedious process. I said, okay, let me print out my master's book. Like when it is finished your topic your what is it called the supervisors that you have graduated and everything design it properly like this is my final submission i got that cover page pre- designed it properly printed it out and put it on my vision board and i put the graduation cap and every time i would look at it i'm like i'll do this i'll do this but it didn't stop at just putting up the picture i had to go to class I had to go and do the research. I had to chase down my supervisor. One of my supervisors, <laughs> it was so hard catching him. I didn't go to Makere, so I don't know much about Makere, like which faculty is where, which faculty is where. So the first time I went there, I'm like, now where do I find this guy? Education, where is education? Like it was all like, can I do this thing without having to, you know, go through this? But I knew I had to do it. So finally I finished, and when I was ticking off that, you know, it feels good, you people. When you have finished something, accomplished it, and you tick it off, it feels so good. I can tell you, people. I believe most of you here, if you've been in these in these um, classes, you are achieving your goals, and you can testify. It feels good. So that day of my graduation, I told my husband, I have officially finished this course. Tick, I ticked it off. I was like, this is good, this is good. But I put in the time, I put in the effort, I paid the fees. I overlooked the inconveniences. I said I will do it. I spoke to myself. Hmm? You know that you, you believe the words you speak more than the other the words of other people. If you keep on telling yourself I can't, I can't, you will not. You you will not. What you're saying will come to pass. If you've read the story of the woman of the issue of blood, she kept on telling herself, "If only I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole." That's what she kept on telling herself. She repeated it, she repeated it, she repeated it. And as you can imagine, there were so many people around Jesus, but she's like, okay, today might be that day. She went, and that was that day. So, this vision board will not work in isolation. Your mind, the work you have to put in, the words you're speaking, the people you're surrounding yourself with. Because there are sometimes people um, are just there to pull down your ideas. You want to achieve what? We want to be the, the great, the, the, a conference speaker of which country, of, of which organization, where, how, you know? <laughs> they will challenge you. Let me tell you, they will challenge you. I remember um, when I was doing my uh, bachelor's, it was challenging because of finances. So a family friend of my, of ours, an, an elder lady, she was working in the UN, I had gone to her because she had promised to give my mom some money for fees to add to what we had. And she was like, but Faith, why, why did you apply for a degree? Why didn't you apply for a diploma? You know, you, you, you know your issues. You can't manage these things. I felt bad. But I said, you know what? I'll finish. I'll finish this course. So she gave me what she gave me. I think that was still first year. But the real test of my desire to finish that course came in third year. Because in third year, I had so much faith, like my name. I had so much faith that I will finish this course on time. I will not be derailed. I will go all the way. But come first semester exams, there was no money to pay fees. To the very last date, I believed, but the money wasn't there. And it dawned on me the next day that I'm not in the examination room. I have not done the exam. So that word she spoke to me came back to me and I'm like, could she have been right? Of course, in that moment, you are angry, you are so vulnerable, and you feel like giving up. And I said, maybe she wasn't, maybe she was. But I encouraged myself, you know, I encouraged myself. God led me to a woman who told me, let us pray. God will take you out of this scenario. We prayed two weeks. I gave myself, let me tell you people. Sometimes you have to olaruka. I told myself in two weeks I'm getting a job. Because the strategy was get a job, work, make money, go back to school. Because now it was evident I'm applying for Dedia, which I did apply for. So I I, I took out I took I took time 
two weeks to pray and fast and just focus and recover from the shock of I've not done the exams because it was shocking you know <laughs> you, you need someone to help you relax and say it is well it is okay you've not done the exams but it is okay it is okay so you won't die so after those two weeks I went on a job search now this was not sitting back job searching I bought the newspapers that had jobs. I think it, it was New Vision Mondays, and I landed a job. That job, I said, okay, they need salespeople. I don't have experience, but I think I can do it. So I apply. I apply, and they, they, they call me for an interview, the first interview. And in the interview, they tell me, uh, we shall call you back. I said, okay. I go back home, and after like several days, nobody's calling me. I'm like, they told me they'll call me back. I need to go and ask them, why have you not yet called me back? I called the landline of that company. And I said, my name is Faith Nasali. I would like to speak to Mr. So-and-so. So they put him on the line. And I tell him, sir, my name is Faith. I did an interview there. And uh, you said you would call me back. And I'm checking WhatsApp. He said, you're hired. <laughs> That's how I got hired. <laughs> That's how I got hired, you know? So much as we may put these things on the board we have the desires the challenges will come but you don't give up it may be delayed she mentioned the scripture in in habakkuk chapter 2 you know uh, verse 2 and 3 it says write the vision make it plain so that he who reads it may run then the next verse says but even if it is delayed it will surely come to pass there are things that have been on my vision board for a long time but i still believe they will happen and i don't have to force it you know, it's not a matter of forcing it and saying, you must happen, you must happen, you must happen. No, I don't have to force it. They will come. They will come. So, I mean, I don't know if I've said anything you can take away as you're pinning up your vision board. But um, the inspiration is all around us. The people you interact with, uh, the books you read. When you read a book about uh, maybe some, somebody who has traveled the nations and, you know, you may be like, okay, what does it feel like to actually take off a month to travel? Go from city to city to city to city. You're like, wow, I think it's a good feeling. You go print a, a plane, boarding pass, or whatever the picture is that decodes what traveling is for you or that experience. You, you print it out, put it on your vision board. The vision board doesn't necessarily have to have only pictures. You can have um, statements. There are statements that may be speaking to you specifically about something that maybe you need to achieve. For example, there's a statement here I printed and I keep saying to myself, every day and in every way, I'm getting better and better. When I read that, I see it every day, I manifest it. I manifest it because I keep saying it. It is a, the becoming better is getting attracted to me. There is a magnetism, a magnetism force there, but also I am working on it because I will not say every day and in every room I'm getting better and better, and I'm just sitting, no, waiting for it to happen. No, there is work in it. So you may put their statements like that. You can have scriptures there. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Uh, whatever is inspiring you at that moment that you find is going to speak to the dreams, the goals you have in your life, you can design it, print it out, write it. It doesn't. If you don't have a printer, you can write it with your hand. I have things I put on my vision board that have painted. During lockdown, we had a lot of time, eh? so I took time to paint some of these things in the way that I felt was decoding what I wanted. So don't worry if you don't have a printer. You can write it. You can draw it whatever decodes what you want to achieve is, as long as you understand it, like she said, you may see some people's pictures and you're like, ah, what is that? What does that mean? But you, you understand it. There are people I want to meet and I'm like, I want to meet that man of God, that speaker, that I print their pictures and I see myself meeting these people. Thank you. <laughs>